Hi, this is Kara. Welcome to Really Famous. Today, I'm talking to a really, really good human being. He's a major force on Broadway and beyond. He's extremely talented and personable, and it's no wonder he has so many fans and friends who adore him. And now I'm happy to say I consider him a friend too. It's Mauricio Martinez, and before the pandemic, he had a nice run on Broadway playing Emilio Estefan in the hit musical On Your Feet, the story of Gloria and Emilio Estefan. Mauricio also sings and performs regularly at venues like 54 Below in New York City, which, I'll tell you a little side story, was a venue that I was all set to appear at in June 2020, you know, before everything shut down. So I was actually on their schedule to do a live, really famous show on stage with a spiffy New York City crowd and my special guest, Michael Ian Black. So if you've been with me since before the pandemic, you remember I was just getting started with onstage shows, first with Michael Imperioli from The Sopranos, which we did in Midtown Manhattan as well, then with Yul Vazquez at The Stand near Union Square on March 6th, which was literally days before the shutdown. Next up was Chaz Palminteri at the Lee Strasberg Theater and Institute. I just loved doing these shows and I will be doing them again, I will. Tim Daly will likely be my first guest. In fact, we've been talking about it, so please stay tuned. I'm kind of still waiting out the pandemic to set more dates, but talking about it now actually makes me think I should just do it anyway. But I digress. Let's get back to Mauricio, who knows very well how wonderful it feels to be on stage doing what you love most. Mauricio, which is pronounced Mauricio, not Mauricio, as I found out during this talk, and who I now call Mao when we catch up, was brought to me by our mutual friend, Beth Schaeferman. I met Beth through the iconic New York restaurant Sardi's, and Mao met Beth through On Your Feet. Beth thought we would be great together on Really Famous, and she was absolutely right. I think you will wholeheartedly love our conversation. We taped it at the Westgate New York Grand Central, a modern but personal hotel in Midtown New York. You may remember me mentioning it on the episode with Wilson Cruz, which we also taped there on a big, gorgeous balcony overlooking the East River. This time, we filmed in their lounge off the main lobby, and the space is so cool. It's modern and cozy, and you can see photos of Mao and me right now, sitting in the lounge recording this, on my Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter feeds. If you don't follow me yet, now's a great time. I put easy links in today's show notes, so you just click on those and boom, you're there. So anyway, yes, it was fun. We even attracted a small audience. And since it was in a public space, you will hear some noises, a few voices here and there, an espresso being made at the adjacent bar. It's all part of the vibe. So now here's my talk with Mao, who, by the way, is working on a new musical called Joy that's based on the 2015 film of the same name, you know, which starred Jennifer Lawrence as entrepreneur Joy Mangano, the inventor of the Miracle Mop, among other fun things. It'll premiere sometime in 2022, starting regionally and then Broadway bound. Today's episode is sponsored by the really famous Amazon shop. That's right, there's a shop on Amazon where you will find all kinds of fun things like Randy Rainbow's new CD, movie collections, TV trivia games, and every time you shop on Amazon through my link, that's amazon.com slash shop slash really famous, you help support the show because Amazon sends us a little thank you for sending you their way. So I thank you for that. And now here we are. Are you okay holding the yes, mic? Yes, yes, of course. Okay. I also have mic stands, but I'm, I'm so like, tired yeah. of schlepping all yeah. this equipment. Okay, so let's talk about some of our mutual friends. Okay, yes. I think we have some. I'm sure we do. All right, so I checked out, you know, we follow each other on Instagram yes. now, which is nice. Yes. And I always like to see what you're up to. And we were going to do this like two years ago, before I think. Before the pandemic? Yeah. Yeah. People were going to do a lot of things before the pandemic. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Life stopped. I yeah. know. It stopped, but now I'm starting to remember like, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We right. can do, you know. We can do this. Yes, we yeah, can do good. this. And so I'm like, oh, wait, Mauricio, we can get to get back in the yeah. studio and tape something. Yeah. So um, I was happy about that. So on Instagram, you know, you can see who your mutual oh, followers are. Oh, yeah, your mutual are. followers or friends, yeah. Right. So I see Jaime Camille. 
Yes. He's a very dear friend of mine. Is he? Many years ago, yeah. He hosted uh, Operación Triunfo, which is Mexican Idol, basically, which ah. I was a participant. I was a contestant, and he was the host. This was so uh, almost 20 years ago, 19 years ago, actually, 19 and a half years ago in Mexico City. And that's where we first met. And we became friends afterwards. I mean, with the show, during the show. But of course, you can't really become friends with a host while you're right. a contestant. But once the show was done, we connected and we became really good friends. And uh, he loves musical theater, too. So that's how we like bonded. And yeah, he's he's a great. I brought him mariachi to um, his Broadway debut, which was just a year before my Broadway debut. Oh, um, okay. he, did, he did Chicago uh, with another fellow Mexican, Bianca Marroquin. So they made history as the first two Mexicans to lead uh, a Broadway musical. And I promised him having dinner that if he did that, because he was not sure if we, he was already doing it, but Bianca was supposed to, um, they were not, they were going to miss each other for like a couple of weeks. And he said, maybe I'll stay because uh, I'm in hiatus right now. He was doing Jane the Virgin. And he said, maybe I'll oh. just stay um, so I can be with Bianca and, and have two Mexicans and him Myself and another friend of ours um, that we have in common, who's a very famous um, reporter and TV journalist, uh, entertainment reporter in Mexico. He said, you know, if you do that, you're going to make history. That, that'd be the first time that two Mexican born actors lead a Broadway musical. And I said, if you do that, Jaime, I promise you I'll bring you mariachi, which is like a very Mexican tradition. Like you do it for your mother and Mother's Day, for your like, significant other on their birthdays or anniversaries, like when it's something special or when you're like uh, at a wedding or like drunk and there's like a big celebration, you bring mariachi and you serenade your oh. loved ones. So you're talking about like a mariachi so band. I, yeah, I, okay. got, I got so I got a mariachi band at Toloache, the restaurant that's like uh, a block away from um, the theater where Broadway, the ambassador where Chicago is playing. So I got the mariachi and I got them all ready. And we were Jaime and Bianca thought that the, the press was waiting for them after their first show together and they opened the door and there I was with a mariachi so it was great it was a great That's um so cool. a great summer that I'll never forget and mm. then just a year at later I was making my Broadway That's debut with On Your amazing. Feet so it was very magical yeah very. so yeah I love I love 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 Jaime he's a really really good guy he's you can't find people like him in this business so so commonly so often you know good heart that recommends you for jobs with people. He will write that email to like a casting director or like a writer that he's worked to recommend you. Like he will do that. He'll go the extra mile. And that's something that not a lot of people do in this business. And Jaime has done that for me several times. I was at his wedding dancing. I mean, he's, he's very loved. I, I adore him. Well, with that, so there you go. no, with right? that, I know now I know I, I mean, I already could have guessed it, but now I totally love you too, because oh. I exactly appreciate that about him too. Yeah. That's, I have the same perception of him as okay. you're describing, like exactly. So he, I met him the first time when he was a guest on my show, I was in LA. And okay. so we taped one episode there and I really felt that from him. Right. And then we taped a second episode when he was in New York promoting his film, right before the pandemic it was okay. february 2020 Oof. and since then he has done exactly what you're saying for me like i've asked him for advice about like well, what should i do next with right. this show like what's the next step and he was like okay let Let's jump on the phone right now. And he right. spent like all this time telling me, okay, I'm feeling like, you know, this is what's so special about you. And this is what you should do with it. You could do this. You could try this. Let me get into you in touch with this person. And, and like, that's what that's he does. Exactly. He opens what you're saying. doors to people. He connects people. He's, yeah. Yeah. He's really a wonderful. And I've, I've been able to see him evolve like and, and grow older and become a husband, a father. And uh -huh. like, he just, he's a wonderful human being. Like, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm, Totally in love with that person, yes. you know, and he knows it. Yeah. I adore him. Yeah. To me, I'm like, oh, that's a good sign right there. Because yes. I see that. OK, yes, so that yes. makes me feel like, yes. <laughs> and so let's talk about the other people who are. Yeah. So Beth, do you know Beth from? Yes, from Tardis. Yes. Yes, of course. So I really think that's how you and I originally okay. connected, even though we haven't connected really until right this minute. My dear Beth. Well, she's a gr huge fan of On Your Feet. Yes. That's how we met, literally, because she would come to the show. And she was part of this group called the Feeties, which started out as a big fan club for On Your Feet, 
which were basically like Ana Villafañez fan club at the beginning. And then they started becoming like this big. They love Doreen. May she rest in peace. Like all, all of our on your feet people. Um, and so when I came in the show, I was the last Emilio on Broadway. And then I took it on the road. They were always there. And then I realized that she worked at Sardi's and yeah. I started going to Sardi's and we would run, run, like run into each other and we just hit it off immediately and then like sooner that rather than later we were like going to the theater together she comes to my concerts wow. like uh, yeah she's a lovely lovely she lovely too? human yeah. being See, there are there are these good people out yeah. there and also she will go out of her way to make connections to get mm -hmm. you like interviews like she's she's helped me um have sardis as like the set for my some interviews that i've done and parties like She goes. She did the same for me. Out of her way. See? So, yeah. Yes. I love Beth. I yeah. know. Me Beth, too. if you're watching, yes. I love you. <laughs> Beth, me too. So, yeah, she's great. And I taped interviews there um, with yeah. Beth. And that's how I got. I just, I remember, I think I just called her up one day. I just called up Sardis, like, hey, you know, this would be a great fit for the show. I'm looking for a new venue. And, uh, and she got it for you. She was all about it. Yeah. She was like, you know, sometimes people get it and some people don't about the great publicity that you get by being the it's location. Sardis. Like, yeah. Like, right. Like, yeah. So, for example, today, the Westgate, New York Grand Central, I'm going to pump them up because, like, this is a great venue. We this love so, it. I, I just told you before the interview, I, it looks great for camera. It's like, great I think for it, camera. Yeah. The so, texture, the colors, like, yeah, I like it. It's a good mood, good yeah. vibe, I feel like. And I'm on the chairs. east side, so we're, I, feel, I feel fancy whenever I'm on the east <laughs> side. I'm like, oh, I, gotta, I better dress up. I'm, I'm going to the east side. <laughs> It's like, oh, right. I'm in the east side. Moving on up. <laughs> so, yes, I interviewed Randy Rainbow, I remember, up Oh, I there. love Randy, too. And He's then, a dear friend of mine, too. Is he really? I love him. Wow. He's phenomenal. And I love what he's created. And he's so talented. And, like, he's, yeah, wonder. Now he's, like, touring with his show, yeah. with his cabaret. I love that. I love that. Yes. Yeah. Do you also know Lisa Carvalho? Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. So, Lisa is a friend of mine, too. I met Lisa uh, through my ex, actually. Oh. She's a friend of my ex. Okay. Who's a journalist. And uh, we met and we just immediately hit it off because she's fantastic. And we became friends. I, I miss her because I haven't seen her in a, in a while. Yeah, I mean, I adore her. I haven't seen her since my last show at 54 Below, I think. Yeah. But okay. I love her. I adore her. Yeah. So you are yeah. a great judge of character and you have found all these great people because all the people that I'm bringing up are like the great people. Good people. Yeah. Good hearted people. That yes. People that you want in your life. Yeah. Because this business, um, like I, we were saying before about high man, like it's it's you can tell when people are there and you're going to keep them in your life. Mm -hmm. Like they're just good hearted people that you want around, that you want as part of your support group, that that will show up if like at two in the morning you call them and you're like in, in need of a friend, they will be there. Yeah. You know? And th those are the type of people that, that you should hang on to, yeah. hang on to, you know? There are, there are people like that out there. I think there are plenty of people like out there, but it's not that easy to come across them, I think. Mm -hmm. So when you find them, it's like, yeah, you want to keep them in your life. Yes. Because that's what life is all about. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right, who else? So All right, so who are, oh shoot, now I feel like I might <laughs> them, Lisa, it might be Beth. dwindling. Hi, May Lisa. I did write them down. That's fine. I have my hidden little cards over that's here. Good. I try never to look at them, but I have hey, some that's ideas. What for. Of, right, so I did write them down. Who do I have? Okay, so Wilson was another one. Oh, there you go. Okay. He was, yeah. Wilson yeah. Cruz, who was just, we yeah. just taped an episode last week, and um, I mean, he's such an example. You know, he's he's also Latino. Mm -hmm. He's also gay. Like, so he's a reference to me. Yes. Always has been. So. When I finally met him after working with his brother, he, I mean, he's just adorable. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, and we barely know each other, really, but I, I just know that he's, he's a good guy to look up to. Like, well, I'll tell you a little story about uh, proof that he's a good guy. Yeah. So remember how I, how I uh, sent you a message yesterday saying there was a typo in the address of where we're meeting oh, yes. today? So I had accidentally written West. 42nd instead, instead of, of east. east yeah just because i'm in the habit so i, I think wasn't gonna already. dress up as <laughs> right as <much>. you were <laughs> gonna come in your sweats i'm kidding your loungewear i'm your kidding zoom west side. i'm kidding i'm kidding i live in the west side so <laughs> i love the west side by the way I'm like no no yeah. hate to the east side but i do love the west, I'm a side. west sider yeah that's what i love about the city it's it's very it's not divided mm -hmm. it's really there's everything for for every taste yeah and the west side's a bit a bit more Bohemian, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Artsy. Yeah. Which is my world. 
So yeah, yeah. eclectic. Yes. Also more touristy too. Well, you deal with that too. But, right, and I always yeah. think of like Upper West Side. I love the Upper West Side. That was my first neighborhood when I moved to New that York. That feels like it feels like home to me. I love the Upper West Side. I love Columbus Circle and up. Because I used to go to AMDA, um, which is on the the Ansonia building on 73rd and Broadway. And I used to live on 85th and Broadway. So I, every morning I would walk from 85th to 73rd uh, down Broadway. So that's like... It's a nice walk. Yeah. Yeah. How can you not... How can you top that? Like when you first moved to New York at 18 you from can't. Mexico and that's like your morning walk every day. Right. To go study dance and acting and music and singing and like... Yeah. It reminds me of, I think... I had heard Al Pacino once talking about when he was getting ready for the Godfather role, mm -hmm. I think. And I think he was living in the city on the Upper West Side. Okay. And he was just trying to figure out and he would just walk down Broadway, I think he said, from like the Upper West Side, just all the way down. Wow. Downtown. Wow. Um, just thinking, figuring it out. That's a great out. walk. Yes. It's a great city to, to be an actor. Like, because not only because, of the, yeah, the Broadway's here in theater, just doing those sort of things yeah. i go i i usually go to central park to walk and like to learn lines sometimes like i oh, go so and lines yeah or learn music like i okay well walk yeah. me through that <laughs> what do you do exactly i well, if it's music that i have to learn like uh, i will play it in my in my ear pods and go to the central park and just listen to it and just maybe sit down by a bench and just stay there i would stay there for like two or three hours If it's a scene, I will take it with me, whether it be electronically or I print it out and I walk and I just walk, whether it be cold or, or warm, it doesn't matter. But I, I learn a lot of my lines in Central Park. I only live th four blocks away from Central uh -huh. Park, so it's a blessing. So, but I promised myself that if I was going to live so close to Central Park, I might, I, I have to use it. I have to, that's my garden, you know, like, yeah, so I'm very nice privileged. I run there all the time, at least four times a week, but I go there a lot just to be by myself and sort of like focus, meditate, pray, concentrate. I like I talk to the city sometimes there. That's that's what I do. I talk to the city, you know? Yeah, tell uh, me about the talk. Well, talking to the city is like, well, this is the city where I've always wanted to live. I moved here when I was 18 mm -hmm. and I was here for two years, two and a half years, and then I had to leave because my visa ran out. So I had to go back to Mexico. So New York was always like a, a destination that I wanted to come back to as an adult and succeed in and like fall in love in mm -hmm. and like be an adult, just like be a working actor in New York. Um, and I had little tastes of it whenever I would come and do something and then go back. But I was like, oh, I, I want to go back. I want to go back. So when I was going back and forth, auditioning, hoping to get a show, but still living in Mexico City, I would go to Central Park mm -hmm. and just sit down and be like, talk to the city and be like, okay. Okay, New York, it's time. Please open the doors for me. I'm ready. Come on. We're a match. Come on, let's do this. And it works. Yeah. New I York believe listened. in it. Yeah. It's, you know? Well, it's like that. Yeah. You know, Some people it's might think like, oh, look, he's crazy. Why is he talking to the buildings? But I'm like, yeah. I, I talk to the city a lot. A lot. I do that. So do you say it out loud? Like oh, I'm yeah. talking about? So you do. Oh, yeah. So if somebody sees you like from down the path they know or whatever I'm crazy people know i'm crazy though <laughs> it's a good thing but you just so you say it out yeah. loud but it works i you know i have to tell you the more i so i was a therapist before uh -huh. i started this so you know when i would hear things about like oh you just have to think positively and things like that i would always kind of yeah. brush it off as like okay that's fine but really it takes a little deeper work to figure things out or right. like to change things right but i do think the more the older i get and the more the more open i am to other ideas too and i really do feel like this concept of you're putting it out in the universe yeah. what you you know it's a match yes. you know it's for you so it's like you have to really like send that and out there it out and you loud. manifest it yeah. and i do think that you're manifesting it because it's come because of what you're doing do you know what i'm yeah, saying like I, i think as the therapist that's the side of it that i really believe in is that you're putting it out there because you believe it so then you're acting on it to make it happen well, imagine what i was doing i was taping a tv show in mexico city and getting auditions for broadway shows at the same time and flying from mexico city on the red eye to new york and arriving at five in the morning or six in the morning going straight to the the audition and then w it was snowing because it was like february march april this was 2017 and then auditioning and then i would go do my ritual like talk to the city and then get in a taxi and go back to the airport land in mexico city at like 
10 p.m., go to bed, and then in the next morning, continue shooting the TV show. Like, that's how committed I was. That's you what know? I'm saying. Yeah. That's exactly that's what I'm saying. That's how committed I was. So yeah. you knew it, and you let yourself not like instead of being like oh that's just a dream i don't, don't want to jinx myself no. like those are the statements i'm always like none of these statements like you have to if you see it for yourself you believe in it and you do it and you put it out there because you are going to make it happen and now that i'm here yeah like that, that i'm been here for almost five years in this city four and a half years i remind myself constantly like you are where you asked to be now that i have a green card in yeah. two years i can become a citizen like I'm, I can work in whatever field I choose to, but I mean, I chose performing, of course, yeah. but I live where I wanted to live in the apartment that I wanted to have, like w working with Broadway caliber people, like just like I got to pinch myself sometimes because mm -hmm. this this career is filled with um, self-doubt, mm -hmm. as, as we said, and sometimes we don't remember all the blessings that we've had or that we that we have to this moment. I just had a friend of mine stay at my apartment for a month. She's a Mexican actress living in Miami, working in like the Hispanic TV world uh, that I also work sometimes at. And she was just listening to me for one day, talking to my manager about a reading and a workshop, Broadway this and the contract. Blah, blah. I hung up and I was like in the moment and she was just like getting ready to go to the gym or whatever. And she said, do you realize like, the life you have and I'm like what do you mean the life you have like you're living the dream mm. literally I just listen to you and I watch you and I like don't forget that Mao. just like look around and it's like you're absolutely right but sometimes we need other people mm -hmm. to tell us yeah you know, uh, to yeah. remind us of how lucky we are and and because we are I I am living the life that I chose to live yeah it's not perfect but i knew it was not going to be perfect that's just how life is but i'm living in the city where i wanted to be i'm an artist like that's my job that's my profession that's what i do like i'm a new yorker like so it's like and you're probably she's right and yeah. she's probably you're helping her too yeah by like emitting that kind of joy or of life yeah well now know. she's moving to new york oh see <laughs> see yes. And I love that. I'm like, yes, do it. Do it. Do, do it. it. Jump in the pool. So there, there is a lot of rejection though, right? And the, just getting back to what you were saying. Constantly. So there's a lot. It's constant. And I think that's one of the differences in people who make it in, especially in entertainment, mm -hmm. is that the rejection, it keep, they have to understand that it's just constant rejection. It's constant. There's going to be way course. more rejection than, than acceptance. Yeah, yeah. Way more. So what do you do? How do you handle it? Well, it depends on what the rejection is, who's it coming from, and what part of my life I'm at, what stage I'm at. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's not the same to be rejected um, when you're, I don't know, super in love, like in your birthday party, and you know you have another great gig, and like you're, you know, you're, mm -hmm. you're like in great health and great shape, everything is wonderful, and you got rejected for a project, but you have another one lined up. Like, so it's like, oh, well but when you're rejected and you're on your own and maybe you're depressed and you have financial distress or like maybe you're 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 sick like maybe you're like have a cold or like not feeling good the rejection sometimes hits you way harder it just depends because we're so volatile yeah. you know as performers as human beings we work with emotions we're we're an open canvas of of emotions all the time so it depends how you are really mm -hmm. you know but how I am, remember, like Finding Nemo, like Dory, the, the fish that like has a short term memory. Yeah, <laughs> that's how I am sometimes, you know, because because I would let's say I, I didn't book this show. Oh, oh I was going to go. I was um, I booked Evita, which is one of my dream shows as Che in the West End. And I was going to move to London for six months in 2020. I was I was uh, fly. I was supposed to fly in April. So, of course, the pandemic hit. And everybody thought it was going to be like oh, only one month and then theaters will open back up. And then when we realized that that was not the case and then we finally got the the letter um, from the producers and everything. And it was hard because it was like, oh, man, I really wanted to go to London yeah. and like do Che, play Che and Evita with Andrew Lloyd Webber. And like, oh, my God, like I was bummed, you know, of course. And of course, I was bummed for like maybe a month, you know. But then you sort of forget about it because you get another you get yeah. another project and you that's how we are. That, that's how I am. Right. You know, one 
rejection or one no for like a project like i didn't book i don't know let's say something uh well then you get another one and you get excited for the next one and yeah. you're like oh well now i gotta focus on this audition so now you put like all your ba your eggs in that basket for like a week while you're preparing the audition and that's how we live mm -hmm. like and especially after the pandemic when we had to teach ourselves how to do self-tapes and we all got the ring light and we all have to like now that's how we do auditions you know so so we got good i think we got we perfected um the way in which we deal with rejection and just keep keep focus keep one of them will be a yes yeah. just keep going just you know just, just keep, keep going, going. Well, i mean not all of them are gonna you're not gonna book everything of uh -huh. course not like of course not not even Barbra Streisand booked everything. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I love reading that. I love these stories. Like, I, I, I it know? gives me such pleasure. Not because I have like Schadenfreude or whatever, and I like to see people suffer, but it does. It's like I love reading about all these super successful people yeah. who had like hard knocks and they went through some tough stuff. I mean, Barbra Streisand, who's like my idol, of course. Like, yeah. come on, you cannot get more rejection than that. Like, and look at her. Um, yes, just people like that. That I mean. People didn't believe in Al Pacino. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You know? yeah, people like, didn't believe in everybody. You know, everybody. Bette Midler, like oh, the, 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 it's, yeah. it's endless. The list of yeah. people that were like, oh, you're never going to make it. And look at them. They're mm -hmm. huge stars. Um, mm -hmm. But a lot of people so. stop when they hear, you know, like a lot of people don't keep going. That's yeah. the problem. I just did a, a, a reading for a, a workshop uh, for a Broadway bound musical based on Joey Mangano's life, uh, the inventor of the Miracle Mop. And I think it's a wonderful story. Uh, Jennifer Lawrence did the movie. Yeah, wait, did, did, isn't and it also the Iron? The yeah, travel she iron? did the Huggable. Uh, uh, the, no, the yes, the right? travel Iron, and also the Huggable hangers too. The 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 hangers with the hangers with the velvet. Oh, yeah, oh, but, really? But also the traveling iron. But the traveling iron. I'm just gonna jump yeah. in with a little story about the traveling iron. So uh -huh. I got one, and uh -huh. I live for the traveling <laughs> iron. It is the, it's her. a steamer, right? <laughs> yes. But I, then I went to get. So my son was going to college. I'm like, you're gonna need one of these because yes, it's the course. greatest, and you're gonna need a little travel one. But you couldn't get one anywhere. I think there were some lawsuits. I think it may have burned some people. Oh. Yes, I know it's very disturbing, but I still use mine because okay. I love it. <laughs> Don't get, burned. <laughs> right, don't get burned. So anyway, we were doing the workshop and there's this beautiful scene wh uh, where um, I'm not going to spoil the show. That's not even uh, a show yet. But um, where um, the, her mother tells her something that she wanted to be a dancer. Um, and Joy tells her, why? Why didn't I know this? And she said, because my mother told me I wasn't any good. And I listened. Oh. So. Yeah. Don't believe that. No. Like, don't listen to people. But how like, hard when it's your parents and or your that. significant other sometimes, yeah. or your your teacher, your like I don't know, your the priest in the church you go to, like any any it could be anyone. Mm -hmm. Don't listen to them. Listen to the ones that believe in you. Listen to the ones who say you can do it, because there's gonna be a million people that are, are gonna say you can't do this. Don't yeah. don't move to New York. You're too old. No, people that are really talented over there. Don't do it. You're, don't you have an accent don't do it like no, you're never gonna what you're never gonna be on broad like what i really hope everybody is listening to you, you right have now. to yes i'm a four-time cancer survivor four-time cancer huge. survivor okay, i so didn't if i would have listened to the first doctor i went to i would be dead by now i probably well, really, like literally what did the first <laughs> well, doctor, the first doctor i went to said you're gonna lose your bladder like literally he was an older military uh, slightly homophobic doctor and he was like nope me and my then partner were, were like shocked looking at him and listening to him because he was like, nope, no, this is too bad. No, looking at the x-ray like, no, I think you're not you're not going to be able to keep your bladder. No, like just so negative. And I was like, I need a second opinion. So you thought that right away. I need a second opinion. Yes. Well, good for you. I, I said, nope, I, that's good. But that's who I am. That's, that's part of my you are, personality. But you're lucky that you're that's yeah. not just lucky that you have that in you. But that's exactly more reason I'm like, to. I'm going to go and, uh, get a second, a third, yeah. a fourth. But by the second one, I was like, oh, this is way better. And the third I chose to. I, and that's the doctor that saved my life. And 11 years later, here I am, four time cancer survivor. OK, so what happened? What yeah. did you do? You mind me asking what, no, ha what I, did you do? I had bladder cancer. Um, yeah. So I, it was like I went to urinate one day and April 1st, 2010. And it was as if I opened it was as if I opened a bottle of red wine, let's say, like just like wow. really um, dark um, red, you know? 
no pain, no signs whatsoever, just that. So I went to the doctor and they did some tests and everything. And the, um, the ultrasound um, showed that I had four tumors in my bladder, four tumors. And one of them was in a very risky position and it was like almost this big, you know, our bladder, it's like this big. Yeah. The tumor so was like, like the this size big, of a like the size of a, a, of a tennis something. ball, a tennis ball. Um, so and uh -huh. our bladder is like the size of a melon, maybe. Okay. So it's like that's pretty big, you yeah. know, like almost half of the bladder um, when it's empty. So I got localized chemo. I got localized radiotherapy and I started my battle against cancer. Um, little did I know that it was going to be as stubborn as I am. And uh, it it kept coming back. It, it's come back three times, but I'm healthy. I'm a good patient. I go to do my checkups every four months. And yeah. Wow. Okay. So you really have a good attitude. So yeah. um, you have to. I know. I know. But you have to. But I'm sure there are moments when you don't. Oh, feel God. I it. fell into depression a couple of times, especially the fourth time that I had cancer. because I was in the middle of touring with On Your Feet. And there I was at the Pantages Theater with Gloria and Emilio Stefan and like the press and my mom and my manager and the family. Everything was wonderful in Hollywood. And all of a sudden doing a great show, a great performance. And then during intermission, the same. Oh. I went to pee and boom, um, blood. So I went to the doctor the next day and five tumors. And I had just had my checkup five months prior and nothing. Wow. So in five months, I produced f five tumors. So that I was heartbroken because I had to leave the show and I was in the middle of my green card process. So I, I couldn't really leave the country. And I, uh, my doctor was in Mexico. And it was like a very uh, lots of... Um, uncertainty lots of doubt lots of anger too um and i was very sad too mm -hmm. heartbroken and i fell into a deep 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 depression like suicidal thoughts like just horrible i felt unemployed 40 years old and then finally back in mexico in my mother's house i felt like a loser and mm. i had just been a month After before all, i was like on top of on the top world. of the world you know at the top of my game so i felt this big you know yeah but i decided i was like okay this is not gonna kill me like i'm gonna i'm gonna be i'm gonna focus on me so i focused on getting better i went to the psychiatrist to the psychologist mm. i went like, and practiced so yoga i started writing yeah i clinged to my support group poor like some of my best friends like god bless them because i would talk, call them like 10 times a day 12 times a day and I would have nervous breakdowns. One of them is um, a friend of mine who lives in Texas, beautiful, who's literally saved my life, uh, Liz. And she would like she showed up, uh, went traveled with me uh, on tour, like so I could leave the show because I was like a nervous wreck. Mm -hmm. You know, I uh, it was it was a very trying time, but um, I felt I couldn't even make a decision at the supermarket. I remember, you know, because I had anxiety and mm -hmm. depression at the same time, and it would get make making decisions just made me exhausted because I, I got anxious. I was like, what cereal should I pick? What cereal yeah. should I pick at the supermarket? You know, that's how depressed I was. It was horrible. But I did a show anyway because I, I learned this. I, I knew the show and that's what I do, you know, so yeah. I, I would just plow through. But inside I was yeah. dying, you know, I was yeah. finding a, a battle and losing a battle. So, um. I am very grateful that I have a great support group, group and that I listen to my body and I listen to my to my senses. And right. I said, OK, I, I need to stop. I need to step away for a minute. And focus on me. Reconnect, cry, just be with myself and you're going to come out stronger, mm -hmm. you know, and I did luckily, you know, but yeah, so many people don't. So many people don't. I know it sounds like. As you tell the story, it sounds like it's easy to just come yeah. out of it, but oh, it no, isn't. But it's not. It it's isn't. Not. So and like, it's okay. I learned the greatest phrase, which is, it's okay not to be okay. Yeah. You know, because sometimes, and that's a great phrase. It's okay not to be okay. Because we learn to to roll with the punches and be like, oh, it's fine. Like, I had cancer the second and the third time, and I was like, oh, I was shooting a movie. I kept on going. Like, oh, just get the tumor out and blah, blah, blah. I would, like, go to the gym right after chemo. Like, I, I was like a super robot, like a robocop like ah. a superman you know and everybody was like mao you you're dealing with cancer i'm like no but that's I'm, it's not gonna be in my way la, 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 and i just kept going of course it was adding up until i exploded the fourth time you know and yeah. i i believe that um messages 
come to you as many times as you need to listen until you learn the lesson. Oh, you know? okay. Yes, interesting. <laughs> so, so do you think you got it so the fourth time will be the last? Hopefully. Mm, that's hopefully. interesting. But I have to be aware, and that's probably, that's also a big part of why I fell into a depression the fourth time, because I, I was told by my doctor, I was like, he said, you need to treat cancer, your type of cancer, that's not going to kill you. You're not going to die from cancer. Because mm -hmm. bladder cancer is very stubborn, especially at, you, or at your age, because bladder cancer is called the old man's cancer, because men over 70, 70 and over get it. And I got it when I was 30. So he was like, you, you got to be ready that you might have this for the rest mm -hmm. of your life. So treat it as a chronic condition. Oh, how like treat it. That helped you. Treat then. it as yeah. uh, as if you had diabetes, you know? Uh -huh. And I was like, I don't know if I can do this because it's a big cancer is a big word. But then I I did. I learned I was like, OK, well, if let's say tomorrow, knock on wood, wherever wood is, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, there's some wood. let's say tomorrow I there's another tiny tumor. Let's get it out and I'll be okay. Like, yeah. I'm not going to die from it, you know? But it's the realis it was the re realization of, of knowing that I was going to have to deal with it the rest of my life that really hit a chord. Mm -hmm. And I got really sad because I, I have suffered a lot. You know, I have, it, it has been very painful, like invasive to my body. And it has emotionally just really really mm -hmm. um has taken a toll so i was afraid of going through that again i was like please please just let's let's just stop can we just mm -hmm. stop and call it a day but realizing that it may not be over and that i have to keep on living no matter what changed the way i i see it but i had to get i had there. to get there yeah. and getting there was not easy no. you know you have to say no to a lot of um, even people that are not doing any good in your life and oh, situations. So was and, it like a reckoning? Yeah, it, definitely. Yeah, de it was like yeah. Um, so you can, so you can connect with like an, an untethered part of you, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and you don't get distracted. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. It is very interesting. But so, I bless the fact that I'm an artist uh -huh. and that I get to perform and use my emotions and that I get to sing and act and be on stage and that I get to sing it out. Yeah, it's a great outlet. It's a great outlet. Be sure. You know, like, yeah. and I use, yeah. I u yeah, use my job as an outlet. Yeah, yeah. Always. So, you know? and then, of course, I'm guessing therapy helped a lot. It still does. It yeah, yeah, still of course. does. Yes, 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 yes. So, you're pretty good about being open and facing things that maybe you naturally wouldn't want to face, but you do. But you have to. But you have to. Yeah. So, you, were you like, good at that right away or did that take no, a while? No, it took a while. Cause, and you go through phases, you know? Sometimes you're... you're uh -huh. I, I went through an angry phase and I would just like fight with strangers on Twitter, you know? Like... Things like that. You've got, yeah. mom, you need to stop doing that. <laughs> like, you know, like, and, and you go through phases. You, like, it's literally the steps, you know, of, of, of grief. Mm -hmm. You go through denial and then you go through uh, acceptance. But the, before that, you went through bargaining, everything, mm -hmm. you know, and anger. Mm -hmm. Lots of anger. There was a lot of anger, too. Yeah, yeah. Anger is so tied up with so many things that it's, you know, usually there's other things that are happening under the surface that that but it shows itself but i believe people should people are afraid to show anger sometimes mm. and you should not be afraid of anger because mm -hmm. anger is actually good when you know how to go through it and then let it go yeah you can't just suppress it right you need to identify it's, it it's good that's why in therapy it. sometimes you, you know this is there but like people you remember like people like sometimes tell you you punch that back yeah like, yeah because you have to do it right. you know or like or go sweat it out and scream and like yes it's it's actually good right Otherwise, i'll say like what are you what are you angry about say it yes. say it like what yes. are you angry at it's okay to say and it it's you okay need to, to. It. yeah because until you do it's gonna just be inside festering and just building momentum yes so yes it's definitely important important to do it so i went through all the faces all the uh -huh. faces and it was and of course i was doing okay much better and then the pandemic hit so it, that, that was a great like eye opener like oh okay i need to focus really focus and be be aware of how i'm feeling and how because you're out of a job mm -hmm. you're in new york city by yourself 
like this is a recipe for disaster but just so but i made it i was like okay i'm gonna be in touch yeah. with how'd you do it what'd you do you stay i was in touch i with stayed in new york uh-huh. i stayed a lo- in touch with a lot of people obviously i went um I did all the Zoom parties you can possibly imagine, but I was very creative too. I started writing too, and I started um, doing lots of, um, well, not lots, but I did several uh, cons- concerts, like virtual concerts, and I did master classes too, teaching musical theater and yeah. how to interpret a song and audition um, techniques and stuff, and just wrote it out. You know, I w- would go w- to walks with friends here in New York. Uh-huh. Um, I would ride the bike, go downtown, get get on the city bike and just yeah, yeah get the wind on my face and yeah just ride it out because it was it was a hard time it was totally so you were alone did you live alone at I that time i lived alone i i was supposed to get a roommate mm-hmm. i did get a roommate for a day a girl from mexico that asked me to save her um the extra room that i had since april and she arrived in july um so I was paying the rent by myself. And then finally she gets here July 1st and uh, I take her to dinner. Welcome, la, la, la. And then July 2nd in the morning, she's I wake up and I, I come out of my room and she's like with her suitcases. And she's like, the Uber will pick me up in five minutes. Why? Uh, I don't think I'm st- I'm not staying. Um, so she left <laughs> and I was there all alone. <laughs> oh, no. And after such a nice intro <laughs> and like welcoming. Uh, but so she left. So th- there I was again. Oh. <sighs> alone but then i finally got a a, a great roommate um in the, my last apartment that last year for a couple of months and then i decided to move by myself to a new apartment this year and it's been great it's I'm, been great i decorated it uh-huh. and i made it really my my home my dream home it's a great studio um in hell's kitchen and i'm i'm very happy i it's yeah well you also have all these uh, people in your life you, so even if you're living alone you don't you're feel not alone, alone. Because, right? And and yes, because uh-huh. technology is a beautiful thing. Like I FaceTime my mom every other, other day, my friends, uh, just connecting via Facebook or Instagram with friends. I feel like you see them yeah. all the time, you know? And I have a support group here in New York um, who's very that are very important. But I've also learned how to enjoy my alone time again. I'm not afraid of being alone. Mm-hmm. And that's a beautiful thing. Like having a date with yourself, like pouring a glass of wine or maybe two, you know, and like popcorn and just watch, binge watch a TV show on a Saturday night. It's cold outside. So you're like, I'm in my PJs on my own. I turn my cell phone Mm -hmm. off and I'm like, I'm with myself right now watching, I don't know, the morning show or like impeachment. Like I binge watched or succession, like shows that I'm like obsessed with right now. And I'm like, I love it. And six hours went by and I'm fine. Yeah. Like I'm literally fine. I'm having a great time yeah. on my own. So so it's really cool, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I've yeah. always been like that. I always have loved my alone time. And right. so I love people too. So I think right. you, you can be both. Right. Me too. Um, yeah. yeah. I can tell that you're the same way. So, but I do like these times where I'm just by myself. I'm like, this is the greatest I thing. I adore it. I love it. I like, adore to be it. wherever in a really cool place and like, yes, this is a great experience. Yes. Yeah. It's great to have people. It's great to have a partner. It's great. Mm-hmm. Of course, family, every it's all of that is wonderful. Yes. But when you learn to be okay and really enjoy your solitude. Because I, I love that about the English language. There's a big difference between solitude and loneliness. Yeah. In Spanish, it's the same word. Oh, okay. Soledad. Ah. It's the same word. So it's I love that about... Because in English, it's it's very... It, you can see the difference between the both terms. Yeah. And in Spanish, it's like they both mean the same. Um so and but it's different it's it is not different. the same to be lonely right uh, uh, or to be to have solitude to enjoy your solitude you know definitely and i think also that we're better partners or family members or whatever else if we are able to be to have solitude and yes. have that appreciation of being alone at the same and time play music yeah l- yeah l- light a candle so what about the partners over the years so exes partners how w- well i'm very good friends with two of my exes oh. who are like the most important relationships I've had. I've had, I want to say four, I'm going to get in, tr- I'm going to in trouble if they see this, but I want to say four 
real relationships, like long, committed, you know? Yeah, I've been yeah. married. Okay. And I've been engaged. Um, I was engaged to a woman back in 2004 in Mexico, Lisette. She's the woman of my life because she's literally the only woman I've, <laughs> I've been with in my life. But I love her to this day. You and, do. And um, we're very, very, very close. And I adore her. It didn't work out, obviously. But afterwards, she, she got married. She's a mom. And she has a great life. But we're, we have that um, rapport to mm, this day. And connection. that respect. And that uh -huh. we, talk, we talk about it. Because she's also a performer. And she like, does TV and film and music in Mexico. And um, they ask her about me every now and then. And oh, every time right. she talks about me, is like with a big smile. And she says beautiful things. And likewise, you know, whenever... They ask me about her. It's like she's the woman of my life. What what can yeah. I say? Like I love her. Like so that's really nice. But that, so what, what yeah. happened? What was it? What did well, you? Well, she's. I firmly believe she's five years older than me. I firmly believe, first of all, that women mature faster than men. I think. Uh huh. I know it for a fact. I was raised by women. Um, you know, uh, she was thirty when we met, and I was twenty-five. I was coming straight out of Mexican Idol. We both were starring in Saturday Night Fever. Uh, she was she had been in the business for 20 years she started as a kid and she was literally coming out of a divorce and i was just 25 straight out of like the the contest the tv show like wanting to be a star just so young and so eager la, la, la. and i fell madly in love with her but i wanted other things you know and she said after two years two and a half years of a very happy beautiful relationship we loved our each other's family it was great but then she's like, you know what? I, I don't want to cut your wings. You're young still. You should live. And she literally said, you should fly. Oh, wow. I want to settle down. I'm 33, 34. I want to have kids, want to get married. And you, I, don't, I would never do that to you. You're too young. And she, I was in Mexico, and she knew that I, New York was like at the back of my head. Oh, and she's like, you got to go to Broadway. You got to go to New York. You got you to gotta live. And I don't want to go there. I don't even speak English. You know, mm -hmm. she's like, I... My life is here, like so. Wow, she's really special. So again, you you're a good judge of character. Yeah, she I is, stand by that observation. She's really I made special. A while ago. Yeah, yeah. She's wonderful, and to this day, she's a dear, dear, dear friend. One of the most important okay. people in my life. So then, and then the Emilio. Three. Emilio's my ex. Okay. My ex husband. We got married. We were together for seven and a half years, and again, one of my. I mean, he's one of the first phone calls. If anything happens to me to this day. He's one of the first phone calls, you know? If I have like five phone calls, let's say, he's probably number three after my mom and, you know, like. Okay. So, because um, he became a mentor in my life. He's 15 years senior, my senior. And again, he taught me a lot about my life, a lot about um, accepting who I was and my sexuality too. And like, because I thought I was bi for a second and then I was like, and he really taught me how to be a proud gay man and just he I, I grew a lot with him and we shared beautiful things together and i i said yes he proposed the first time i was diagnosed with cancer right before i went into surgery he proposed and i said yes yes and he's wonderful i love him but as we know stories sometimes love trumps transforms itself it mm -hmm. didn't disappear but it just transformed it into something else you know and again my life started going this way mm -hmm. and his life started going that way. And I was the one who said, you know what? I think we should, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's fair for me to stay. Mm -hmm. um, we, he went through two of my cancer battles with me and that was hard for me. I was watching, um, it's going to be, it sound uh, 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 shallow as a shallow reference, but it's not, it's, it's deeper than it seems. Sex in the city, um, how uh, there's a scene where uh, Carrie and Samantha and the other two girls are talking about Samantha uh, not sure and not being sure whether she wants to stay with Smith okay. because she went through cancer and she literally says, um, I can't leave him. She, he stayed with me through cancer. And Carrie says, Samantha, you just compared your relationship to chemo. And when I saw that, I went, wow. You know, that's, right. you know, I, I, that's very interesting. Yeah. And it really, I was like, Struck wow. Yeah. yeah, it did. Uh -huh. I saw the scene and I was like, damn, 
you're so right. Like, so that was airing at the time. So it was like you would, yeah. is that kind of what? No, it was, I was think, it a wake up call? Or you saw that later? I don't know if it's it, that's in the movie. I think that's in the movie. Oh, okay. In the first movie, I think, right? I think. I don't remember. I think it's in a movie, not in the TV show per Okay, se. okay. I'm pretty sure, I don't know. I get them confused. Yeah, I don't remember. Um, I can't, they, they all blur. I mean, I just know. know the second movies, the one where they went to like Abu Dhabi or whatever. Right. But the first movie and like season four and five, are, I, I, and you I, were in one episode. I was an extra. You were an extra. <laughs> in season two. Which episode? You can see. I don't know the episode, but I'm in a party where Carrie uh, sees Big with Natasha, uh, like at the Hamptons or something. Okay. Which was not the Hamptons. It was like a beach in Jersey. <laughs> uh, they paid me $100 the hour, the day to be an extra. I did not like it. I didn't like being extra. Oh. Um, I didn't like it. I was too young. I was 19, uh-huh. 20, straight out of school. Um, do you feel like cattle or something? Yeah, I did. Just didn't like the experience. I was like, no, I, I, I want to be there. Yeah, like I want to be doing what they're doing, you know. And later, three, literally three years later, I was shooting uh, as a lead. I was doing a soap opera in Mexico, and and I, I saw the extras, and I, I would, I would make it a point to like go and talk to them and That's sit down because nice. I, I was like, I know what mm-hmm. it feels like. Yeah. Um, to be like sort of forgotten sure. and like you get another type of food and we like became friends because we were like shooting at the same time as everybody else for like months and months and months so yeah yeah it's funny sometimes i meet people i'm like i wish i worked with this person because i feel like we would naturally become friends yeah. like <laughs> you would be so good to be working with i feel like no well matter you never what know hopefully we will was. maybe yes. you never know yeah. i would like to yeah you never know <laughs> um okay so let's go back to your two so the other two okay the uh, well the other two uh, the first one i haven't uh, was my the first love of my life i'm i i want to say we're we're not close but we're cordial to each other uh, okay and um, he still lives in New York. He's older than me, but he was my first first love, and that was that was when I was twenty here in New York. He broke my heart though. But then years later, we reconnected. Nothing happened, but we reconnected as mm-hmm. friends. And yeah, we're acquaintances, and and oh, but but we're not really that close. And the fourth one, um, it's it's uh, he's a journalist here in New York, but but we haven't seen each other since we broke up. Oh, that's well, the first the- time I haven't seen. Or been in touch with and like sort of like completely caught off like uh, uh, i don't know if it's oh. an american thing but, uh, uh, oh so I, everybody nobody else was american no well so, no the first one is but but or also italian so okay but yeah i don't know so this is happened? the first time in my life where it's like like that was over. that well he broke up with me on an email oh. <laughs> That's really crummy. I know. Uh, I know. So was it? It looked good on paper. I mean, he's a he's a great guy. Um, he didn't break your heart then, like he did. No, he, he did. did. And I was going through a lot, and he wasn't ready for it. Um, I was. That's because I. That's we met during my last show uh, on Broadway, and we fell in love, and we started dating long distance. But then I went through like depression and all that, and you know when people are not. Mm-hmm ready for that Mm -hmm. you know they don't know what to you know what how to deal with it Mm -hmm. um so we sort of looked good on paper you know yeah Uh, we could be like a great couple at the red carpet but not you know um so when things got real real i was like "Uh, i need you by my side but he wasn't really Um, capable he couldn't in that place so so is he older than you too, no, or no? He's a bit younger, but oh, like so he's four, the first one. Years? He's the who's first one younger. Younger, I know. So and we're on to something here. I mean, you know that already, but <laughs> yes. maybe right, maybe yeah. maybe older is better though. Yes, for I think you, so too. You know, I think so too. Yeah, because even though you say like, okay, well, women generally may mature. Well, that would just be Lisette. That's her name, right? Lisette. Yeah. Right. Um, but it seems like you are. You know, if you are attracted to older people i've always have yeah like there's something about you but i also know that i am getting older so that i'm I'm, I'm, maybe i mean i've gone on uh, out to dates and stuff and i'm like oh well now i'm older than you but like maybe three four years but it's like it's gonna be more common now because i'm 43 i'm not the youngest one in the room anymore Uh like there was a certain part of uh, a stage in my life where i was always like the youngest one Mm -hmm. in the room like now i'm like no they're even in shows, I'm like, oh, I'm like with 30 year olds and 32 year olds and 22 year olds. And oh, I'm the old one, you know? So uh, so I think maybe I don't yeah. know. Who knows? Mm-hmm, I'm right. not really looking for it, though, which is 
which is a great place to be. I'm not really looking for love right now. Yeah, like, you're looking. You have yourself right now. Yeah, if it in happens, a good way. Great. Yeah, but if it doesn't, I'm literally fine. I've been married. I mean, I'm. Yeah. I'm fine. But yeah, the last one really, the last one really hurt because of how shut down I was. All of a sudden. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I had never dealt with that. I've always been in communication. Because I, I firmly believe, I don't know if it's a culture thing, like a Latin thing, but it's, I think it's a heart thing. Um, when somebody has been in your life, in a meaningful, as a meaningful part of your life, mm -hmm. and the relationship doesn't work, they can still be part of your life. You know, what can you, like, you didn't kill anyone. You, did, you know what I mean? Like, but I think there's this, idea of like shut down like just close and not never speak to that person mm -hmm. again and it's like why like i don't know i don't i don't believe yeah, in that I think me it right it depends me. on it also depends on what the relationship yeah. went through right if there was yeah. some serious hurt if somebody Maybe. hurt another yeah. one i mean another person yeah. like that might be a little bit different for them to figure out like it's better yeah. they're better off just not even you know, having communication with the person if they were really hurt by that person over and over again. Like, it depends yeah. on how healthy the relationship was to begin yeah. with. So if you weren't... So I feel like your relationships were all pretty darn healthy. Very healthy. That's the thing. So that's yeah. another reason why you can do that. Yeah. More easily. And we went to real... Like, we went through... Like, even the fourth time I had cancer, Lisette uh -huh. came to LA with my mom and took care of me. Like, you know what I mean? Like That's amazing. As opposed yeah. to... The guy that I was dating, right, who, who stayed in New York and never even went be to there when it was actually my you were going through ex stuff. fiance, my ex girlfriend came to see me. So that was, I mean, I the red flags were all there, always there. So why did you go out with him in the first place? Well, no, I had al I was already with, but I guess the red flags in that respect were mm -hmm. kind of there, and I ignore them. No, I, well, I did, but I also was like, I had faith because I saw potential, I saw a good heart. And a good person there, but just oh, that's the old. I know. I can he he might change thought. I know that usually See? doesn't work out, or I can change him. Was there some of that? Probably. Uh huh. Uh huh. Can Look, people him. can change. By the way, yeah, because that was the first real relationship uh -huh. like oh. that he had. So I was like, maybe I'll, maybe I'll, you know, yeah. um, this is how relationships are. Like this is, but then. Yeah. I found out, well, no, you don't really want this. You want to have like a single man's life and also have a boyfriend. That doesn't work. Not with right. me. Right. Like, no, right. Not no. with a Latin man. <laughs> you get married, basically, you know, and, but yeah, but it was going really well. well like, I was introduced to the, all the family, like, oh. and friends, and like, it was, and it was like public, and like, I was like, okay, this is, but all of a sudden, boop. And in a moment where I was like, needing somebody by my side so it was yeah it was yeah that's really a it bummer. was it was hard mm -hmm. but i didn't blame it was it happened but of course i was of course i was hurt and angry for a while but then yeah but i haven't seen him again yeah you'll run into him at some of course point. yeah is he in the same circles as you well, well not so, well he works in the same industry he's uh, journalist so i mean oh, he's right. bound to yeah. interview me at some point i think i guess i don't know <laughs> If I, open a, if I open a new Broadway show, hopefully, I mean, on a red carpet or something. Because, yeah, that's what he does. For oh, a living, he so. does red carpet interviews? Yeah. Oh, so you will see him yeah. again. <laughs> and he's going to know. Only for Broadway, though, yeah. Like, you won't necessarily know, but he'll know ahead of time when he's like, oh, I'm going to the red carpet tonight. <laughs> and I know who I'm going to be. And I'm amazed that we haven't really, but the pandemic well, hit. Well, the so, pandemic, yeah. yeah. We haven't really. Yeah. Yeah. Well, seen each other at some, so. some point, I think. But I mean, he was a, uh, an important part of my life. Yeah. And no hard feelings. And God bless you. And, and I hope you're, you're happy. Place. Yeah. And you're in a yeah. good place now. And you, you're only 43. There are a lot. I mean, there are yeah. already four significant relationships you've had yes. in your life by 43. I know. So I can only imagine. Now, I'm not saying there's going to be four. There's going to be a lot of number. Maybe there's one number. Or Maybe one two. more. I say. Do you want there to be one more? Because of my age? Yeah. I mean, I'm talking like I'm a, an 85-year-old man. Yeah, that's what's no. funny. You're but 43. I really, if I find someone, may that person be the one. Like, I can't fool around. Like, come on. I'm 43. 43 is like an age where, like, settle down. If you're going to be with me, be with me. You know? Yep. That's how I, that's what I think. Uh-huh. 
you know? Uh -huh. So I think somebody mature. Yes. Well, you need somebody mature. Yeah. And if not in years, in mind. Yeah. And who understands yeah. my way of life, my schedules. Yeah. That I kiss other people for a living sometimes. Right. And get to fall in love with people. Fake fall in love. Like, things like that. And the scheduling. Like, you can't really make... Um, a lot of promises because yeah. of your job, right? Like you can't go to birthdays, you can't go to weddings, you can't go to sometimes because of your career, because you're doing a show, because you're taping a movie, because you're um, doing, you know, yeah. concerts. But and, it's, those are just yeah. the things, you know, the real things are the big things. Yes, and spe especially for me, someone like me who like, I'm a, I'm a cancer survivor, so I need somebody to hold my hand while mm -hmm. I go to chemo. Yes. It's as simple as that, but it's hard. Because people are afraid of that. Some people are afraid of that. So they just don't, they don't, um, they don't want to deal with that. Or they don't know how to deal with that. Yeah, you but it, yes, it's absolutely true. But in yeah. that case, like you can help somebody help you uh, work through it and work through their fear of it. And you that's know why I, mean? I stayed with the other one. Yes. For except, a little while. Except you, the foundation has to be stronger. Yeah. You know what I mean? For that, for you to. Because I thought, okay, that. okay, I, well, let me explain. This is how. Yeah. But then I was like, no. But no, because is... without the strong foundation, the really strong yeah. foundation, like you already thought, went into it thinking, you know, he has potential. But the potential, it's about what's who he is today. Right. You know, if who he was today was really solid, at least with you, then you could w teach him how to deal with the hard things. I hope he doesn't watch this. <laughs> Could you imagine? I mean, he maybe he will, but it's this. fine. I mean, he's Can a great you guy. He stumbles yeah. across this. Maybe. He's like, oh, my God, well, maybe, they're talking but, about me right now. Well, and that's the thing. When you date somebody like me, yeah, yeah I'm going to talk about uh -huh. my personal life. I mean, not everything, but there will be conversations like this. Sure. So, yeah. So just know that because that that's that's part of my life that's right that's right <laughs> i mean that is that's what you're gonna so, get so like you know yeah. i mean he didn't come walk in and meet you when you were and in, like, i'm not an saying unknown. any names but <laughs> but yeah Maybe i mean that's literally how it. we met like through an inter oh, interview oh, oh, like he oh, was you and i was spark. yeah uh -huh. that's where the spark happened yeah so very interesting well if, <laughs> if you're watching god very bless interesting <laughs> It sounds like you had a really interesting experience. <laughs> no, but it was it was fun too. It was fun. Yeah, yeah. Fun. All right. So let me ask you a couple of light questions too now that we're in the light spot. So I've been meaning to ask this more and more because I was realizing it's really a fun question, I think. Who are your celebrity sightings? Like who have you run into in everyday life? So not in entertainment, uh, in, not what I mean is not you know, you're doing a show and there's somebody backstage right, you or at the red hi. carpet or, yeah, right. Exactly. So, like, who have you run into at Dwayne Reed or oh, at, yeah. you know? Well, especially in New York. Well, no, Mexico City, too, of course. Okay. But it's, uh, so, but here, uh, for Robert De Niro. Oh, where? At Central Park, riding a bike. So, did you? And he was with, I don't know if it's his kid or his grandkid, but he was with a kid, very, uh, like a child, riding the bike with a helmet. Oh, and sunglasses, but like right next to him. So you recognized him with a yes. helmet on a bike uh, it's Robert and sunglasses. De Niro. Yeah, because it was a light. There was a light, and we both stopped. I was at a with uh, on a bike too, and I was like, "That's Robert De Niro." Cool. I'm like, "Yeah, that's Robert De Niro." Uh, one, um, Kevin Bacon. Well, six degrees, I and mean, you have to see him all the time. Though I used to see him when I was at Amda in New York. I would used to see him and Kira Sedwick, Sedwick all the time. And I used to see um, Kim Basinger or Basinger uh, when she was married to Alec Baldwin, and they were carrying. They would always carry like a ba like a baby. What do you call? Yeah, a stroller. So this was like twenty years ago. This um, is a long time ago. But that's a, a lot. But Wait, recently, I, yeah, Robert De Niro. Mm -hmm. Recently, James Franco at a theater. Well, right before the pandemic, like literally a week before, at the public theater. I was watching uh, a show and he was right next to me, like literally right here. Huh. So I was like, cool. That's James Franco. Uh, and the same thing happened, but many years, 20 years ago at the Lion King. But this on this side, uh, Isabella Rossellini. Wow. So beautiful. Really? But then th that time I did break the eye. I was like, you're so beautiful. Like I was you like, you're so beautiful. Uh, thank you. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you're, I just had to say it. <laughs> She you was very sweet. I was like, it. you're just, just so beautiful. Like, you had to. You would have regretted it if so you left stunning. and hadn't said it. So stunning. Just like stunning. 
Yeah. In person. Out of That's this nice. world stunning. Yeah. Huh. Um, who else? When in this city, you run into a lot of people. I saw um, Sharon Stone once, like a year and a half ago. Uh, Where? At, on the Upper West Side. Just walking? Yeah, with a cap on. But she, it, it was her. Uh, Naomi Watts, I saw on the subway of all places, like before the pandemic. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, too, by the theater, just walking, literally. Oh, Jake Gyllenhaal, th there he is. Um, and those are like sightings, uh -huh. but of course, like at parties and red right, carpets, right. like of count. course, they don't count. and backstage and mm -hmm. like yes, many, many, many. Um, that's about it, really. That's um, a lot, I think. And for sightings, and in my life, I mean, can you imagine? Yeah, like, no. just being with Gloria and Emilio, like yeah, it was like, I mean, come on, Quincy and Jones, you got to Stevie know them Wonder, very well. like. Yeah. And you got to know them very yeah. well, right? They're amazing. Yeah. I amazing bet. people. I know. Everybody, I'm sure, asked you all about them. So you've talked about them yeah. a million times, but you can just tell me to, one thing about them. What they're, they're the most humble people on earth. Like, mm -hmm. and I've been in settings with them because I, I mean, I did the show for almost two years, but I was very lucky that I did it on Broadway and then on the tour. And on the tour, they would come with us to the important cities like Washington, uh, San Francisco, LA, Chicago. Okay. Um, And I also did the Kennedy honors for Gloria. So I was at the Kennedy Center with politicians and like uh, uh, um, Supreme Justice um, Sonia Sotomayor. Oh. Like, and we went to the Supreme Justice like with them. So I've seen them in settings with like the most important people in the country mm -hmm. versus a waiter in the restaurant that they own in Miami. And they treat everybody the same. Love that. And that's yeah. the most beautiful thing about them. And I went through cancer for the fourth time during the show. And how they would just reach out. Emilio would like, what do you need? Like, do you need an airplane? Do you need a doctor? Do you need money? Like, what do you need? Tell, like, and Gloria Did you would, take them up on anything? No, I mean, no. But the, they, but I'm sure here. they would have genuinely yeah, Thankfully, I didn't need to... anything. You know? Okay, yeah, I was, yeah. I was, I was taken care of, but... Um, But I feel like people like that, but like you're saying, like they genuinely well, want to they help. They went through the same. Like mm. they, I remember, and they tell the story when when um, Gloria almost died in the in the bus accident. You know, Julio Iglesias lent them their airplane. You know, so they could fly. Like things like that. Yeah. That um, they're good people. You know, uh, good, good, good people. Um, Before I forget, yeah. when I was, you know, you might have seen my poll last night. I was asking people on social media, should I wear the orange today or a yellow dress okay. that I had? I couldn't decide. Good orange. Sometimes yeah. I, so yeah. orange, like one by by far. But I was getting comments back about how wonderful you are. Please tell, because I just told my Facebook group of really famous friends and fans. And uh, they're like, please tell him how amazing he was and on your feet. Like, oh, so good. And he's like, the, they're like, the whole cast, everybody, please say it. Such so a great I'm, show. I'm communicating that thank to you. Thank you. It's such a great show. Yeah, it was yeah. such a great show. But I people have... must love you. Like, it must feel good that people feel so good about it, too, and about your work and seeing you. It's a positive association. It's a very positive experience because yeah. I, I, I've always dreamt, as you know, of starring in a Broadway show and yeah. making my Broadway debut. And I couldn't have had a better show to be introduced to Broadway with because it was the union of my two worlds, my Latino TV yeah. music career in Spanish that they're a part of, Gloria and Emilio, you know, Telemundo, Univision, all that, that I did in Mexico, and my Anglo musical theater, Broadway world. It was a fusion of them both in the same, at the same time. So it was like winning the lottery because yeah. it was like my, I'm, I don't consider myself uh, bilingual. I consider myself bicultural. Okay. You know, I, I think that's the difference. You know, I, well, I'm you're both, though. Be, but because I have both cultures, I grew up with both cultures, okay. you know. Yes, I grew up in Mexico, but I grew up in Monterrey, Mexico, which is a very Americanized city. So I grew up with both cultures. I grew up celebrating Thanksgiving and Dia de Muertos. You know what I mean? Like I, I listened to mariachi music and watched telenovelas, but also watched Hollywood movies and Broadway musicals. Like I, I listened to Selena mm -hmm. and Juan Gabriel, but also Barbara Streisand and Frank Sinatra. Like. There's always that duality. So I, I am a bicultured man, you know? For sure. I'm not Mexican-American because I was born in Mexico and raised in Mexico. Uh -huh. I'm, a, I'm a resident now, but uh, yeah, but I, I have that. 
So to have a show like On Your Feet be the show that crossed me over, literally, to be my crossover, it was... Perfect. It was perfect. But you spoke to the city and the city was knew perf- what you needed. And it was, yeah. And it was, there was this moment in the show where uh, Emilio has this beautiful speech at the record label uh, where they're trying to cross over and they, they're trying to record, uh, do a record in English. And the record executive is like, nope, you, you won't cross over unless you change your name, lose the rhythms, lose the beat, lose the percussion, la la la. And he, he goes off in this beautiful written uh, monologue that he used to say. And at the very end, he would point his face and say, this is what an American looks like, you know? The reaction that uh, the character got on every, every show. And those were words that Emilio really said. Mm. And to have them... What's one of your weirdest with, obsessions? Ooh, my weirdest obsessions. Probably... It doesn't get any better than no, that. I mean, what you know? I stare yeah. at people yeah. a lot in the city. That could be weird, but I've been doing it since I went to school, acting school, and th- that's like homework. Mm-hmm. It's called life study, and I love watching people. Sometimes I stare a lot, and they're like, oh, I should stop staring. I'm not like checking you out or like being weirdo. Uh, sometimes I stare at old people or like just study them, how their behavior, their posture, how they breathe, how they talk, how they move their hands, but I'm I'm... I'm seeing if something I'm like, oh, I could use that as a for a character uh, sometime, you know, like uh-huh. and I do it sometimes I I, I copy I, it's it's not copying, but it's called um, it's search and reapply. Like I, I get what I I take what I can do mm-hmm. and do it my own from people on the subway. But it has to be people that I encounter regularly. OK, not like people that I randomly see, like oh. like on my trajectories, like oh. on the subway. So it's the same people. It's the same people that I see over and okay. over again. And I like look at, I did it to Emilio and he was like, stop looking at me. And I'm like, so I'm a sponge. I'm studying you because I, I need to do uh-huh. what you do, how you move, how you move your hands, how you like, because I'm, I'm going to portray well, that's you. that's true. And he was like, why are you, you know, and, and yeah. And I, so I do that a lot. So I could. So I could replicate it. Um, and sometimes, most of the time, I do. Like, I, I do characters at, like, I just did a character. He doesn't know it, but based on my brother. Like, how my older brother reacts and how his mannerisms and how he is. Because he's, like, a very um, self-aware, like, he loves to look good. And, like, uh, and yeah, I, I did it based on him. This uh, is so funny because people, you know? yeah, people often think I'm analyzing them when they know I was a therapist. Right. They, but it's not me. You're the one analyzing people. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> it's yeah. you. That's so funny. Like, I'm not usually analyzing people in everyday life, but you're checking people. I out. am. Okay. <laughs> I have one more question yes. for you. Who are you? Who am I? Yes. Well, I'm a stubborn man. No, I'm a stubborn boy. I see myself as a boy sometimes uh, that got away with... Um, that gets away with everything he wants and everything he sets his mind to. I'm a dreamer, um, bicultural, romantic, uh, passionate, smiley, um, intense, hardworking, loving human being that, yeah, that loves New York, loves pretzels, loves movies, loves LPs, um, loves going to the theater and yeah, loves life. You know, I inherited the love of life from my dad and I hinder- inherited the love of art from my mom. And I love that. I, yeah. Gifts. Yes. Yeah. Stubborn, definitely. But um, positive. I'm resilient. Definitely. You know, I, I have to be. I don't know another way not, uh, another way to be. Other than resilient, you know, if Mm -hmm. I always say if they give me if life gives you lemons, why make lemonade when you can make a margarita, you know, (laughs) definitely. (laughs) Yeah. So that's what I do. Lemonade's not really that good. Come on. Make margarita. Make a margarita. (laughs) Spice it up. Yeah. Yeah. I love I love everything. It all came together for you and it's coming together for you and you deserve it. And I'm so glad we got to meet. Yes. Yes. And thank you for sharing. May it be the first of many. Yes, for sure. For sure. I knew I was like, this is a good I told you this is a good sign. So with the mutual friends, it's a good sign. But it really is. It's wonderful. Well, and now you are a new friend. 
Uh, thank you. Yes. And you are absolutely a new friend of mine. <laughs> that was Mauricio Martinez. Good peeps. Am I right? Hey, why not watch us on YouTube too? I have a bustling channel over there with mini interviews, big juicy interviews, and special videos that may make you smile. Head over now, it's at youtube.com slash reallyfamous and drop a comment, please. It's a great way to say hi and it'll probably make my day. Remember to subscribe while you're there, tap the subscribe button and then tap the notifications bell so you are notified every time I drop a new video, which is usually once or twice a week, always on Fridays and some other days when I have a few extra treats to share. Remember to pop over to the really famous Amazon shop at amazon.com slash shop slash really famous. I have links to everything in today's show notes. I'm Kara. Thanks for hanging out with me and my new friend, Mao. I will talk to you soon. How are we doing on time? Do we know what time it is? Uh, 2.45. 2.45. 2.45. Wow. wow. Really? Wow. I didn't know we were talking this long. All Did right. you? It's, it's Did good. It go it's fast? a good sign. I know it's, it's a, a good, good sign. sign but right? I want to know how it felt for you. Wait. It's Faster okay. though. I was like, I, I'm sure it's like two. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a good first date, right? <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> it's like a good first date. Precisely. <laughs>